Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Laura Bai or Maddie, and today I will be reading chapter 17 of Hashtag Murder Trending by Gretchen McNeil. Let's get right into it. Where the hell are they? The postman said out loud. Even though there was no one around to hear, that was intentional, of course. The postman worked alone, assuming total and complete control over Alcatraz 2.0. It was the only way it could work. There were secrets about the island that only the postman could know, so and so that no strangers... And so, no strangers had been allowed into the inner workings. The postman controlled it all from a single computer interface, a monarch ruling kingdom, a monarch ruling the kingdom below, in charge of every aspect of ex its existence. The guards at the station, they took orders directly from the postman via email and messaging, they were notified of in incoming prisoners and killers alike, as well as shipments of supplies. The postman wasn't was even in charge of the electric security system at the station, only releasing the lock on the weapons on the we on the weapons cabinet when needed. Like when that idiot tried to make a break for it through the water. It was the postman who had been alerted to the, to the escape attempt, the postman who delayed the guards and the drones, and the postman who had timed it all perfectly for live co coverage of Jeremy's death. The postman controlled which of the killers would be on the island at any given time, coordinated their arrivals and departures personally, and even chose the victims. There had been a heated debate on the fan forums about whether the victims were picked at random or if the killers had personal agendas in mind when they went after a prisoner, but no one had ever suspected that the postman directed who would be executed and when and by whom. It had to be that way for the ratings. Bad readings meant bad profits, which meant an unhappy president of the United States Profit was all he cared about, and as long as the postman kept delivering, there was there was carte de blanche, carte blanche, on Alcatraz 2.0, which is why certain tweaks had been made in obtaining the uh, the, which is why certain tweaks had been made in, in obtaining. In the obtaining of prisoners. Jeez, I don't know why that sentence was so hard. <laughs> it had it it had been fine at first. The novelty of live streamed ex executions ensured ensured a highly an insanely high viewership among all rel relative demographics. But after a while, it became clear that watching grizzled grizzled criminals met meet their bloody ends had become boring nancy Wu had changed all that the martial arts expert who'd who'd kill a bouncer after a heated bar fight was young attractive exciting the postman had played up all those aspects by controlling her wardrobe only allowing her to wear tether tight leather pants and strapless corsets views on her camera feeds had gone through the roof and after she killed the caped cap caption who was in desperate need of being replaced anyway nancy Wu had become a cash cow merchandise ad revenue the app hadn't been that profit profitable since its debut and so things had changed had changed on Alcatraz 2.0. Arrest reports throughout the country had been scoured, searching for the, the young, the attractive, the interesting. There was a little bit of there was a a little bit of money went a long way when you already controlled part of the criminal justice system. 
and even a flimsy amount of evidence against a defendant could result in a conviction. Once they were on the island, the postman chose roles for the new arrivals, setting up relationships and drama, and dramas that would keep viewers hooked. Now the pers- now the postman was slowly getting rid of the old, the ugly, and the uninteresting, to pave the way for a population of inmates straight out of a uh, straight straight out of central casting. The app was going to hit new highs in popularity, guaranteed. But at that moment, all of that was secondary. The master plan would have to wait because the postman had bigger things to deal with. Cinderella survivor had somehow managed to slip off the camera grid. With Blair dead, it should it should have taken Griselda, Ethan, and the the Brit longer to trust the girl. Longer to trust the new girl. But certainly but clearly they'd already introduced her to the dark end of the island. Of course, the postman could just send a drone to sweep the area. No, let them think they're safe. That was when people made mistakes, like Blair. She thought she was safe. What? She thought she was safe. What with Jeremy's death and the cold-blooded murder of Prince Slayer? But you were never safe on Alcatraz 2.0. Never. And that's the end of chapter 17. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.